Good evening, everybody. It is once again Ted the Speed Learner, and tonight I'm going to cover the topic of the Unicode Transformation Format 8. Now, there is a Uniform Transformation Format 16. There's also Unicode Transformation Format 32. And eventually, I'm sure they'll come up with a Unicode Transformation Format called UTF 64. Whenever that happens, fine, great, fantastic. But we're not going to focus on any of that right now. We're going to focus on the history of the Unicode transformation format. But before I do, I'm probably one of the rare few YouTube personalities on the YouTube platform that will never go, Oh, please, 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 please like my video. And if you would be ever so kind as to subscribe to my channel, which will cause all my videos to be shared all over the platform. Let me tell you something. That ain't going to work. And I'll tell you why. Because YouTube cannot determine what they need to determine, which is whether my videos are keeping you guys on their platform by the use of the like buttons and the subscribe buttons. Okay? Now, why do these people tell you this? Well, number one, it extends the watch time on their videos, which I'll tell you a little later why that would have an effect. But anyway, the other thing is that um, the like button itself, you could flip through things all day long and just go like, 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 like. It's not going to tell YouTube anything, okay? Now, as for the subscribe button, that's a little different story. Have you noticed that when you hit the subscribe button now, this little menu pops up and it, it sets your bell notifications? There you go. That's why they're telling you that. Now, the, the bell notifications might tell YouTube something about how popular your channel is, and they might want to share your videos because of it. Okay? But what will cause YouTube to share your videos? Well, there are two things you can... Well, first of all... If people like you who are watching these videos right now were to copy the URL of the video and share it on a different social media platform like Facebook, uh, what used to be Twitter, now is X, uh, Gab, uh, you got Truth Social, Instagram, you, Threads, whatever you want to share it on, that would get your video shared more, okay? Number two, when you increase the watch time of the video, then YouTube gets an indication that you, you, people are actually watching the whole thing and not just watching bits or pieces and, and jump, jump cutting through everything in your video. So that is a good indication. The other thing you could do, okay, is you can leave very nice comments in the comments section below. And what that tells them is you were engaged, you watched, you replied, you, you really liked the, the content that you were watching, and that helps your, your ratings as well. So really what you really want to do if you want to increase, uh, if you want to motivate YouTube to share your videos more often, watch the videos all the way through, well not you, but I mean your audience needs to watch the videos all the way through, increase the watch time of every single one of your videos, or have them leave the nice comments in the comments section below so that YouTube can see for themselves that, gee, this is a video we want to share all over the platform. And there you go. And another thing I need to mention real quick before we resume our video is that uh, I have published five Kindle books. They're five bucks a piece. If you want a copy of any of these Kindle books, just leave me a comment in the comments section below and I'll send you a hyperlink to my latest book which you now can see on the screen and then uh, from there you can find my other four Kindle books and there will be more Kindle books coming soon it's all up to you buy them and let me know what you think about them alright on to the video what is the history of the Unicode transformation format well that kinda depends on who you ask as to what answer you may receive. Well, in our case, we're going to ask a gentleman by the name of Mr. Ken Thompson. And I have a hyperlink down here in the description of this video so you can read what he had to say.
I didn't physically talk to him, but you can read the article where somebody actually did, and he gave all the answers. All right? Now, let's briefly go through some of the things he actually did say. According to him, he was sitting at a New Jersey diner, okay? He had familiarized himself with something called the ISO 10646. What that is, I couldn't tell you. If you know, feel free to leave that information in the comment section of this video. All right? Apparently, this ISO 10646 contained a Unicode transformation format. Mr. Thompson was trying to utilize this UTF, which is the Unicode transformation format, to design something that would help a project known as Plan 9. If you have any information about that, feel free to leave that in the comments section of this video. Now, he tried to work on this Plan 9, but he didn't like the result of the work that he was producing. But before Mr. Thompson could ship his 16-bit computer character chart to IBM because he had created a 16-bit computer character chart. He received a phone call from IBM. Mr. Thompson discussed the situation with IBM and the IBM people told Mr. Thompson that if he could create a better system in a quick hurry, they would implement his new idea. So Mr. Thompson designed something, he, something called bit packing and he printed his design on a restaurant placemat, of all things. Who, who would have known? Once Mr. Thompson ate his dinner, he returned to his computer lab and called IBM. Thankfully, he did not get a whole bunch of food on the placemat he was working on. He discussed his new UTF plan with IBM. Then he mailed his idea to IBM and started creating the new UTF code. Now, if you want further details about how Mr. Thompson created this code, there's a bunch of web articles on this, and I actually included a link to one of those right here in the description box of this video. So how does this code actually work? Well, in the video where I talked about de hexadecimals, I once again reiterated how the American Standard Code of Information Interchange, how that actually worked. Do you remember I had those eight bits which formed a byte, and each column had like one, two, four, eight, etc., etc.? Okay. Now, if you'll recall, I had zero, one, zero, 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 one. And this represented the capital letter A. You remember that? Okay. And I told you that there were columns. This was in one column, this was in another, so on and so forth, all the way straight down the line. And if you don't remember, go back to the hexadecimal video and it'll show you. Okay. Now then, what happens when you start turning this into hexadecimal? I covered some of this already in the hexadecimal video, but I'm going to cover it again. You literally split this in half. You split this in half. Okay. So now what you're going to have is 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, and 1. Now, this is going to be divided into columns, and so is this. Just like that. Okay? Now, there are no values here, here, or here. The only thing that has a value is here. So we're going to put a 4 right there. There's a value here, but there's no values in any of the rest of these. So you're going to put a 1 right here. And so the U Unicode character number 41 in hexadecimal is that capital letter A. So in the, in the American Standard Code of Information Interchange, that character is 65. In Unicode, that character is hexadecimal 41. 
Now, why did they do that? Well, the reason why they did that is because if you have an older computer that only understands the American Standard Code of Information Interchange, which is now called ASCII, okay, A-S-K-I-I, -I, or it's actually not A-S-K, it's A-S-C-I-I, -I, sorry. If you have one of, if you have that, you have a computer that go and read ASCII, then what's going to happen is it's going to read it as character 65. In a more modern computer, it read, it read uh, Unicode, it would say, okay, this is Unicode hexadecimal 41. Okay. Now, what if you had the lowercase letter T? There is your your byte, okay? Now, in binary, which would be the uh, way you'd read it for the uh, ASCII, okay? Remember the ASCII code? Okay, so what you'd have is there'd be nothing under the one, one digit, nothing under the two. You'd have four here. You'd have 16, 32, and 64. Okay, I'll write that again because it's really come. So you'd have four here, sixteen here, okay, and I'm sorry for the sloppiness. So you'd add sixty four plus thirty two plus sixteen plus four. Now, what happens there? Well, 64 plus 32 is 96. Okay, so now you got 96 plus 16 plus 4. Well, now you got 112 plus 4 which equals 116. So character 116 in the ASCII code is the lowercase letter t. Is that going to is that going to be the same way in Unicode? Well, let's find out. Once again, we're going to split this in half. Okay, as I showed you previously, we have a 1, a 2, and a 4. Okay, because there's, there's nothing here under the 8. Okay, now, you also have a 4 here. Okay, well, what's 4 plus 2 plus 1? Well, that would be 7. So the hexadecimal number 74 represents the lowercase letter t. Well, that sounds pretty good, right? Well, the problem is, let's say you wanted to represent an alphabet other than English. Now you got a problem. Okay? may have a problem. No, I don't. Okay, I don't have a problem. Now, let's focus again. This time we're going to focus on the capital letter J. Okay. So we have our binary.
just like that. Now then, how do we represent the capital letter J in ASCII? Well, we have 2, 8, plus, so we have 64 plus 8 plus 2, which of course, add that together, would equal 74. You say, how in the heck did we get 74? Well, 64 plus 10 is 74. Is that the same way in hexadecimal? Of course not. The byte stays the same, but how it's represented is completely different. Again, we're going to split it in half. Well, we have a 2 here and an 8 here, and we have a 4 here. So, 8 plus 2, of course, is going to be 10, and you have a 4. Well, we can't add these together. Oh, no. So what you're going to have is 4A. So the hexadecimal 4A represents the capital letter J. Okay. But what if you wanted to represent a character in an alternate alphabet, like the Spanish alphabet, the Latin alphabet, the Greek alphabet, say the Japanese alphabet, okay? And, of course, 8 bits is not going to be enough. Well, so what you do is you don't have just one bit, uh, well, you don't have just one byte representing the letter, you have two, okay? So, So this is your first bit, 1100010. Zero, 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 zero. And then the second bit is going to be 10 zero, one, zero, 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 one, zero. Okay? So you're going to have you have two bytes. This is one byte, this is the other one. Okay? So this will come through the computer first, this will come through the computer second. Now here's what you're going to do. You're going to knock off three bits from the first byte. So now those three bits are gone. Then you're going to knock off two bits from the second byte. So these five bits are what's left from the th first byte, and these six bits are what's left from the second byte. Now we're going to add a leading zero to this, and you'll see why in just a second. Okay? So now we have Let me erase all this. Now this is the combination of the bits that we still had from the first two bytes. Okay? We're going to split this up into sections of four. Four bits here, four bits here, four bits here. Okay. Now, we have a 2 here, we have a 2 here, we have an 8 here, and we have nothing here, okay? So, 8 plus 2 is 10, and this is 2. But we can't represent the 10 like this, so now we have to change that to an A. Now, what happens if you find Unicode A2? Okay, you find Unicode character to A2, in the 8-bit Unicode, 
what you're going to find is the sense sign. That's what you're going to find. Okay? If you want to do further research on this topic of Unicode, feel free to do so. But I will let you know one thing, okay? And this is the most important thing. What I'm going to let you know is the hexadecimal is not just used in Unicode. Oh, no. Do you remember a video I did a long time ago? Well, it wasn't that long ago. It was called R. G B red, green, and blue. All the colors from white to black to to purple to whatever to orange, okay, they are represented with hexadecimal numbers. So if you're using JavaScript and you want to represent a particular color, you will look up its hexadecimal code store that into your JavaScript. Huh. And you can use this UTF-8 to come up with your emojis and musical notes and characters from different alphabets from all over the world, etc., etc., etc. I bet you didn't know that. All right. I want to thank you very much for watching this particular presentation. I will tell you more in a future presentation, so I'd like for you to stay tuned.